Hi, I'm just going to record a short podcast in response to a conversation I had on Twitter about the trolley car dilemma. Um, my name is Dave Webster. Um, I teach religion, philosophy and ethics at the University of Gloucestershire. Um, I was talking to a, a teacher on Twitter about the trolley car problem and I realised the version that I use as an example in my lectures is perhaps deviates somewhat from the version that you might find in textbooks or on the web but I still find it quite a useful um, starting point for conversations about utilitarianism, uh, Kantian ethics um, and something that students can vote on what they're going to do. So although it may probably have deviated from the original as it were, um, I'll give you my example of what I say to students. Imagine yourself walking through a beautiful San Francisco day, um, up and down those big uh, hills, uh, when you notice that there's a trolley car that's not leisurely moving between stops, but a trolley car seems to be out of control. It's hurtling down the hill. It's hurtling down the hill and everybody on it is screaming, like, eh, we're going to die. Um, and that's not good. You can see they're all scared, they're going to die. And even worse, to increase the um, human cost, it's heading towards a bunch of people who it will inevitably, it seems, run over and kill. Uh, in order to generate maximal innocentness, innocence, if that's a word, um, the people it will hit are nuns, they can innocent, and they're shepherding little children. So it's nuns with a nursery, um, shepherding children across the tracks, but the out of control trolley car, it looks like it's going to splat them and turn them all into nun jam or whatever. It's going to completely squash all these people. It will then probably run off the end of the um, into the harbour and kill all those on board. So it looks like there's going to be a disaster. This is not good. But being quick-witted and clever, you also notice at the same moment that you're stood next to a lever. Seems rather lax in regards of health and safety that there are levers about that you could just pull. But never mind. Say if you pull this lever, um, you notice very quickly that the trolley car will change direction. It will veer harmlessly off and hit some buffers. The nuns, the kids and those that are on the trolley car will all be safe, but there is a cost. That's what makes it a dilemma. The cost is that on the tracks by the buffer is an old man. Let's choose things that make him seem unattractive, for the sake of the argument. Maybe he is fat, maybe. Maybe he looks like he might smell, maybe he's scruffy, um, dishevelled, losing his hair, old, um, and he's dropped papers, he's got loads of carrier bags full of papers, and he's dropped loads of papers in the tracks, and he's trying to retrieve them. And it's fairly clear that if you pull the lever, the trolley car will squash him and kill him, and then hit the buffers. So it will save, potentially, 100 lives, say, some of those really maximally innocent lives, as I said. Um, but in order to achieve this life-saving behaviour, you need to kill this man by pulling the lever. Um, now often I say, well, what would you do? The next stage when talking to students is to say, what would be your next action? Would you pull the lever? Excuse me. Um, and save all those lives? Or would you do nothing? Now, that's the point where I would have the audience think um, when I'm teaching. What would you do? Who would pull the uh, lever? Um, and who would save the families of the dead? Well, I saw the lever, but I couldn't make a decision and condemn one person to death and trade their lives. Now, not all, but many, um, certainly many students I presented to, um, are very, not only would they pull the lever, they're very forceful in claiming there is an ethical imperative claim the lever, to pull the lever, then not only um, would they pull the lever, but so should you, that anyone who wouldn't pull the lever is in some way ethically um, lacking. And the grounds that are often put forward, forward for those are utilitarian. You, know, um, you can either um, kill one person 
or kill a hundred. Your choice. Um, of course, the entire um, dilemma seen from that, that kind of utilitarian perspective entirely disrespects any kind of distinction between acts and omissions, between doing something and not doing something. They're seen as equivalent in that kind of analysis of it. But just um, either kill one or kill a hundred, save one, save a hundred. Um, but even seen from that perspective, even putting aside Kantian objections put regarding dignity and respect to life and the fact that you'd be responsible and in the other case you probably wouldn't, the person who maintained the brakes perhaps would be responsible. Um, but putting that aside, uh, putting aside the distinction between acts and omissions, even from a purely utilitarian point of view, there is still a problem. The problem is that we don't actually know what's going to happen. We've got this epistem epistemological absence. We could think, well, if I pull this, one person will die. If I don't pull it, a hundred people will die. But there are lots of factors outside of your control. What about the man? He might look like um, what I guess San Franciscans would call a hobo, um, but he might also be a research professor. Um, they kind of look similar. I mean, you see that website, Tramp or Hobo, um, sorry, Hobo or Prof, sorry. Um, but in America, this kind of idea, they look similar. But this old guy with carrier bags full of bits of paper could be cured for cancer in one of those that written on his scribbled notes he's on the way to take to his research lab that will save 10,000 lives a year. But if he dies, no one, no one can decipher his notes. They're not on the cloud or backed up on a memory stick. They're just scribbled on a little bit of paper. Kill him, they die with him. So for the sake of a few nuns, and what good do they do, a few children, and we always know how to have more, plenty of children in the world, for the sake of them, we condemn tens of thousands of people to needless deaths every year. That doesn't seem very very utilitarian. So, even within the utilitarian way of thinking, there's so much we don't know that what seems like a quick and easy and dirty way of making a decision, how many people are going to die? A bit quick, bit of a hedonic calculus. Even within the, that frame, the trolley car dilemma should present to us um, the idea that that's actually a bit, um, that things are a bit more complicated than that. Uh, so, having thought about that and perhaps having thought about what right we have to kill the old man even if to save the people he ha he's not like one of the um, bomber dilemmas where to save people from the bomb we'd have to kill the bomber he hasn't put the lives of other people in jeopardy so considering that there may be questions about rights and our right to kill people and his um, right to life uh, and given the epistemological difficulties we might face, would we still really, in the face of all that, pull the lever?